worship. Because we are taking them as if we are taking three worship. These are words of deep meditation. Alabanda so pretty and pushed on. Well, let me look at my vision.
that you speak to us this morning by your spirit. We have elevated your word in our worship this morning. We ask that that word, that life changing word, we come. That life changing word, we come. And if we come to altar, the status quo in our lives, if we come to change our very existence, if we come to put us on a new pedestal, where we decline no more, but only make progress. This is our heart cry. Ancient words. Come. Spirit of the living God, anoint my lips of clean and proclaim your words of life. One more time in this house. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And God's people say, it's our outreach Sunday this morning, and I welcome everyone of us. It's our outreach Sunday where we minister to the needs of one another. It's only those of the house who hold faith. And on this outreach Sunday, the Lord has given you a word. For those that are familiar with uh, taking notes and taking messages from this altar, you will have noticed that I have been a consistent teacher teaching series. And when I say series, part one, part two, part three, you will have noticed that for over two, three years now, that has been a, a, a norm. But recently, I began to feel a norm to the spirit not to do that this month. I don't know why, but I believe the Lord has the best at heart for us. And that is why we are not doing part two. This teaching now is not a sequel to what we did last week. It's a new teaching entirely because the Lord has a word for someone in this service. When I got this word from the Lord, I knew that somebody's life is about to shift. I've chosen to tie today's there is a divine reservation for you. It's a prophetic message. It's not a lecture. There is a divine reservation. Maybe somebody has been thinking, why is my lot like this? Why is my portion? Looking around your peers, your contemporaries, where you do comparison and contrast, you are still in the negative. And you are wondering, what is going on with my life? God has sent his servant to me this morning with his word. There is a divine reservation for you. Luke 14, 16 to 23. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke chapter 14, beginning from verse 16, as we read down to 23. Then said he unto them, it was a parable, a certain man had a great supper and bade many, the word bade is the old King James word for invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden or invited, for all things are now ready. Buffet, continental dishes, whatever you want to eat, Chinese, any cuisine of any kind is ready. Verse 18 comes up with a contrast. Contrary to what we were expecting the invited guests to say, and they all with one consent. It was as if they had a meeting. Because there was this there was this, this agreement in their comment. And they all, one with one, consent began to make excuse. The folk said unto him, imagine the excuse. Imagine the excuse. I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excuse. I won't be able to meet your dinner. I won't be able to show up for this dinner. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. In those days, that represent the tractors of today. The machineries, the agricultural implements, the machineries used on the farmland, the tractors. I've just bought five tractors. I need to test them. You can test these tractors after party tomorrow. Who tests a tractor at night? This is not lunch. This is dinner. 
But you know, when people have decided to make excuses, tell them this thing is free, they will still tell you the reason why it will cost them a lot. I pray thee, have me excused. I'm not saying, I have just married a wife, like brother Medina. I just got married yesterday, Pastor. Don't stress me. And therefore, I cannot come. I see when you, are, when you first get married, they will suspend all your body parts. Amen. You that have been married, am I talking? They will suspend all your body parts and they will hang it somewhere. After seven days, they will not, they will not return them back to you. So every one of them began to give excuses. So the servant came and showed his Lord this thing. Look at the excuses of all our guests. That the master of the house being angry. If it were you, you have, you have killed cows. Imagine how we celebrate in the southwest of Nigeria. Yoruba land, for instance. Somebody is having wedding. Or somebody is having burial. You can imagine the, the kind of investment that will have gone into this dinner. And the Lord of the feast was so angry. And he said to his servant, this food can always go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in either the poor, the people we have marginalized, the so-called rats of the society, the so-called the dregs of the society, the people that have been outclassed, the people that have been marginalized that we did not consider in our first invitation. Go now, extend my invitation to all and sundry. Not only that, even the, the handicapped of the society, that you, that you will have thought, no, you can't come to the presence of the king. You don't have the finis, you don't have the 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 the, 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 the sophistication. You stay where you are. No, 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 no. You can't be you can't be limping before his royal majesty. So go and call everybody. The odd, the maimed, and the blind. Next verse. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And there is yet room. 23, the last verse. Begin. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out. No, you know, now they have filled the room from the street and the lanes. No, said, Go out into the highways. Leave, leave Shasha community, leave Akomojo, travel to cement, highways, Mango, Ikeja alone. Get down to Ikeja inside. Begin to survey the highways. Travel down to Oshodi, highways, and the edges, and compel them to come that my house may be filled. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. The host of that party add two things that are worthy of notes in this passage. In this passage. I want you to follow me this morning. In the passage we just read, the host of this party had two things that are worthy of commendation. Number one, he had great capacity to meet the needs of many people. When the high class could not accept his invitation or honor his invitation, he has tempted because capacity is there. He had prepared, he had made all things ready. The Bible says he extended the invitation to those on the street and on the lanes and on the highways and around the hedges. Great capacity to meet the need. That was why he was willing to call anybody, fill the room. When they told him, we have invited as many as you have told us, but we still have space. He said, no, there must not be space in my banquet. Fill everywhere. That all must be packed out. Number two thing we saw about this host, this great host, is that he had willingness to reach out to many in spite of the disappointment and in spite of their social class. Many people would, would have said, okay, maybe we will just... I can't stand it. How can I bring the blind, the maim to my to my to my party? No, 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 no. I can't I, I can't come down, I can't stoop so low. But this guy was willing to reach out in spite of the societal class of the people, in spite of the disappointment from the from the from the from the eye brow people of, of society, he was willing to reach out to as many as possible 
in spite of the disappointment. And as I began to meditate on these two qualities, I discovered that these are the qualities of God the Father. Have you not noticed that God the Father is called El Shaddai? I told us last week when I was teaching on the power of God. El Shaddai meaning capacity that cannot be exceeded. And we liken that to the, to, to the mammary glands of a woman, the breast of a woman. We said God is multi-breasted, many breasted. That the best a woman can ever have, however big she might be, is two. Just a pair of mammary glands. But God, in terms of being inexhaustible supplier of the whole world, is multi I mean, breasted, which is El Shaddai, the one that can never be outclassed. You cannot outsmart him. You cannot, you cannot outgive him. Abraham was going to give his only begotten son. He knew a day will come, I will give my own son. And Abraham will not have to kill his son, as I'll be telling you later. But I will still kill my own because nobody on earth can outgive me. I have a cattle on a thousand hills. Psalm 24 verse 1 said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Talking about the planet, the constellations, talking about the universe as a, as, as, as a whole. Belonging to our God. Capacity that can never be exceeded. And just like the host of this great party, God the Father, listen to this, has a reservation for you and I. What is the word what, what is the meaning of the word reservation? Already made provision. If I've ever had to go for a picnic, I have to use maybe a guest house or a hotel or any any place that is outside, home, away from home. Do you understand the word reservation? When somebody say I've made reservations at Marriott for you and your wife, for you and this thing, that means you don't have to go there and start struggling. And most of the time, those reservations come with all expense paid. I get what I'm saying. So you just get there with your bag and enter. They will lodge you in. And before you know what is, I mean, they will check you in. And before you know what is happening, you are enjoying luxury at the cost of another. It's called reservation. I've come with the prophetic word and this teaching word this morning that God has a reservation for somebody this year. It does not matter what others around you are doing. It's their time. Your own time is coming. And God has a reservation, a divine reservation for you. And I prophesy you will not miss out on that reservation this year. I wrote in my note that God is the God of predestination and intentionality. What does that mean? God will not be scratching his head in the next five years to begin to ask himself, what will I do about Lillian? What will I do about Janet? What will I do about Tiwalola? Or what, what will I do about Henry? What will I do about Soji? What will I do about uh, Ifai? Is a God of predestination. What does that mean? What you will be, Isaiah 46 verse 10 shows light to that. Isaiah 46 verse 10. God is a God of predestination. Nothing catches him by surprise in the universe. COVID-19 came and COVID-19 went. He was not shocked. He was not surprised. He was not moved. He did not leave his throne and be running about. How do I end this plague now? How do I end this plague now? No! He was, he was calm and settled because nothing catches him by surprise. So are the details of your life. We are talking of a God who knows your future more than you know your past. As a matter of fact, you don't need word of knowledge to tell me what happened yesterday to you. You don't, you don't need word of knowledge to tell me what happened two days ago in your life. You know everything. And God, we are talking about the God who declares the end. Isaiah 46 verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. Even before you were born, even when there was no calendar, when there were, when, when, when calendar was, was, was not in use, primitive olden days, when there was no January, I believe you know, those of you that did world history, you know that there was a time in this world that was no January, there was no February, there was no January, February, March, April, May. It was later that those, 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 those sections began to come in. It was AD so-so-so, BC so-so-so. There was no 1995. 
the Roman Empire, Greek Empire, the Babylonian Empire, ancient time, declaring the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel is just done, and I will do all my pleasure. I've come this morning to announce to somebody, God's counsel concerning your life shall stand. It does not matter how much the enemy fight the purposes of God for your life, it shall still come to pass. Because God is a God of intentionality. He's not the God of afterthought. He's not the God of afterthought. He doesn't do something because something has happened. Oh, no. his steps are calculated. Hello? If man had not fallen, there was a provision. There has always been provision because the Bible says, even the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, had been slain from the foundations of the world. God saw in the aliens ahead, years, light years ahead, that man is going to fall. Man will fall his hand one day. And it's that there has to be a program called the redemption of man. Raising the seed of the woman to bruise the head of the serpent. He knew that declaring the end. We have to be this is the God we have to do with. This is the God we have come to serve. And this is the God we have come to worship. I want you to open up your heart this season, this year, and, and believe with all your heart that God has a reservation for me. Just like that rich man who hosted a lot of people and said, Go and call them. Now, all things, no matter what they want to drink, whatever they want to drink is ready. How many of you would like, would like to go to such an event and everything is available? Continental cuisine local food everything is available you are the one that will say i am fed up i am tired Echo, don't kill me because the host has made adequate provision i've come to announce to somebody this year that nothing can catch god by surprising your life god has made provision for you in hindsight if you will look back at your life there was a time you were crying for the breakthrough you now have remember there was a time you didn't have a child. You were begging God in fasting and prayer, praying every day. Pastors laying hands on you, and all of a sudden the child came. That same child is in university now. You have you have forgotten. Man or men generally, human generally, have a tendency of forgetting. No one the psalmist said in Psalm 103 verse two, "Forget not his benefits." Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me from verse one, and do not forget. Because man has the capacity, the propensity to forget. The breakthrough you now celebrate used to be a cry five years ago. Hello? Hello? How many of you have been, have been saving and been praying to buy a car? All of a sudden, two weeks after you have bought the car, you are wondering, is this, is it worth it? And you're like, no, that is life. Eternity he has put in our heart. Nothing can satisfy it except a thing of the size of God. Only God can quench that desire. And that is why it is, it is foolish to begin to pursue ephemeral things. They can't quench that test. No. He has put eternity. Ecclesiastes. He has put eternity in their heart. Only the size of God can quench that test. Praise the Lord. As I moved this morning, the Bible is full of examples of people, men and women who enjoy, enjoyed divine reservations in their journey to life. I'm going to give you two instances, two case studies. Number one, Aga. Aga was the handmaid of Sarah, or of Sarah, the wife of Abraham. Genesis 21, verse 16. Aga was moving from a position of almost dying after she had been sent out. But let me give you the scripture, Genesis 20, verse 16. And she went, talking about Aga, and sat her down over against him. Ishmael was with her. Remember the background of the story? She had been cast out. They cast out the born woman and, I mean, and her son. Aga, Ishmael were cast out. Now they were stranded in the desert, in the wilderness. No water as it were. But God has a reservation for every one of us. That is the drum I've come to beat into your ears this morning. Into your heart until it becomes your heartbeat. 
when you enter tomorrow in the office, in your business center, you will know I'm stepping into a day that the Lord has made. Know that the government of Nigeria has made. Why? Because he has a divine a salvation. All I need to do was for my eyes to be open. All I need to do is to align myself and to enjoy. I can't be laboring over what has been labored for. I just need to align and discover. May your eyes open. May your eyes open. She went and sat her down over against him a good way off as it were a bow shot. For she said, look at this woman. Every woman can relate to this. Your child has been very sick. You've taken her, I mean you've taken him or her now, the baby, for treatment. He wouldn't just get better. All of a sudden you just leave the child somewhere. And you don't want to see the last breath being drawn by that child. And you are looking away. Not that you don't care, but you care too much to watch that child draw the last of his fleeting breath. Let me not see the death of this child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice. And all she could do was to She was weeping. Verse 17 are happy. We are still going for. And God heard. It's so amazing. God did not hear the voice of Hagar. No covenant. It was the voice of the lad, the small boy, the child of Abraham, the covenant carrying one. You see, covenant we always speak. Say covenant we always speak. The covenant of the blood of Jesus will speak over you and your family this week. The covenant of the mercy of God will speak over you. Wherever you are on the face of the earth, God will hear your voice. Not by power, not by might, because it is not of him that will, not of him that run it, or it's going to be by his mercies. The Bible says, God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord called to Agar out of heaven and said unto her, What ailed thee, Agar? Fear not, for God had heard the voice, the pain, the agony of the Lord where he is. I know you are not trying, you are trying not to see this boy take his last breath. God has seen that. And much more because he's a seed of Abraham. Maybe you don't know. All those in the Emirates, those, those in the the, the slightly state of the world today, they are seeds of Abraham. And the same covenant in Genesis 12, verse 2 to 3. He who blesses you with like bless. He who curses you with like curse. And in this are all the families of the earth they bless. That covenant still applies even to them, even though they don't know Jesus. God is a covenant keeping. Are you getting me? Because no matter how much Nigeria prays, let, can I shock you? Look at how many churches we have in Nigeria. Look at how many churches they have in Iran, Oman, Qatar. Compare the GDP of those two nations, of those nations. You will see that the number of churches we have in Nigeria has become a disadvantage even to Nigeria. We are talking of Abrahamic covenant here, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying? So whether it is it is an it's an Islamic world like Turkey, like Oman, like 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 Saudi Arabia. But the covenant of the law still holds true. I prophesy, God has a divine reservation for you this year. And you will not miss out. Ega and her son couldn't miss out on the earth. Arise, lift up the lad. He's not going to die. You have touched this within your hand, but this is just a bend. The story is not the story of your life and your son isn't going to head this way. You are going to cross over to the other side. I prophesy to a woman watching me, a woman listening to me this morning, you are crossing over to the other side. A man in your business, you are crossing over to the other side. They have thought inflation will kill your business. But the Lord has sent me to you this morning. The Lord has a divine reservation for you. And you will get through as if nothing ever happened. I wish you could believe what I'm saying with passion. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand. Look at it. For I will make him a great nation. Lord, we are saying, we are talking of survival now. We are talking of thriving. We are talking of immediate survival. God is saying, beyond survival, I've seen something ahead. Your son isn't going to die. Rather, even when you are long gone, Hagar, this child is going to be a child of greatness because of the link he had come from. From. It's going to be a great nation. Verse 19. Look at this. Look at the reservation of God. Even the wilderness. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Question. 
did God or did angel, that angel did do well? Talk to me. You are you are intelligent people. Did that angel did do well? Which means the well has always been there. There are provisions, there are reservations around you this year, but you have not seen them. I prophesy like Agar, may your eyes be opened. That oil of well, oil well, that oil well around you, may your eyes be open to see them. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. What could be a greater provision to a woman and a child dying of starvation and dehydration in the Arabian desert? If you have not been to Jerusalem, you've not been to Jordan, you've not been to the Middle East, you cannot understand this. We are talking of a, a, a temperature that will so rise in the course of the day and that will so drop in the course of the night because it's a desert. And the Bible says, God opened her heart. There's an oasis. Oasis. Always standing by. But she never saw. Maybe she was mesmerized and, and exasperated by what she has been going through. You need not be exasperated. You need not be mesmerized. You need not be overtaken by what you have been through this year. I've, I, I come with a prophetic word for you today. God has a reservation for you and for me. And like Ada, your eyes will be opened. And guess what? And God opened her eyes and she went and filled the bottle and gave the lad to drink as his spirit revived again. Where they have thought will be your ending point this year, God has made it your turning point. The person I'm talking about is on Admiralty Way now. He just got to Lekki now. He's on the island of Tomina Bridge. He just saw that they have blocked the bridge so he reversed again to take Carter Bridge. Yeah. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus, what they have thought will be your ending shall be your turning point. Yeah. And all of a sudden they will say, when the saw become one of the prophets, they will say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Nathaniel will answer them, come and see. Miracle of come and see, the Lord will show it to you. The Lord will do it in your life. Second example, second case study of a man of a, of a person who's enjoyed divine reservation in your journey is Abraham. Abraham and the ram that was caught in the ticket. Genesis 22. I've chosen this, these careful examples because I want you to see that when you are at your lowest ebb, when you are at your lowest ebb, when your candlelight is almost out, God is just warming up to show his mighty hand. We serve a God that prophesied that said by himself, weeping may have endured. Hey, it's just for the night. Joy comes. Oh Lord, I am 37. I have not married yet. I am 38. My mates are, are they have had two children in their husband houses. What is going on? Relax. God has a reservation for you. The testimony of Sister Jane in the UK today cannot, cannot stop overwhelming and, 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 and exciting me. Every time she came to me then in the former church, she said, Pastor, I've paid for another visa. I want to travel. And we, we agree. Lord, make the way. Open doors. And, the, and she will go. They will bounce her. Ha. When she me on the way back, Pastor, they bounce me. Okay, it's the first time. Don't worry. Don't make the way. Come back. Be, be, be encouraged. Second time. Third time. I said, no, something is happening here. Let me go and pray. I need to seek the face of the Lord. I went in prayer and fast, and the Lord showed me it is her husband that will be the reason for her to go to UK. She will not go to UK, but I said, marriage will be the visa to UK. Ah, I said, Lord, see the Lord. The Lord said, it's your husband that will take you to UK. Stop applying for UK visa. Lord, so he made short. A cardiothoracic surgeon. Hello? Cardiothoracic. You want to do a heart surgery? That is a cardiothoracic surgeon came all the way, called his mom, Ijebu guy, called the mom, Ijebu woman. I need a wife, a very decent girl in Nigeria to marry. The mother, we pray together too, called me, Pastor Inka, your brother in UK said he needs. I said, ah. but the mom now said there is a, a lady. I always see the two of you together praying. Blah, blah, blah. Is she? I said, a ah, very simple woman. Amen. Well, let's say she's married. 
very swing with her. I love that girl. The mom was saying, I love that girl. I would love my son to marry her. Look at divine predestination. I said, God has a divine reservation for you. And it, you will not miss out on it. Long story made short. I said, Mommy, I'm not a matchmaker. I'm just a pastor. I cannot talk to this girl. You talk to her first. Because now this is a distant relationship. The guy is not in Nigeria. I would like to tell my sister. Talk to her first. Show him. Show her the picture. Tell him. He's a soldier. In the UK. Not in Abba. Not in the Meta. He's a soldier. Let him know. And Isaiah said, Remember the word of our prophet. Marriage shall be your visa. And she called me. Say, Pastor, we, we need to see. There's something happening. I said, what? What is it? And I pretend as if I have not even heard. I said, well, we need to pray about it. Oh, ah, this person we have not seen. Hmm, we need to pray about this guy. In my heart, I said, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Long story made short, on the day of the hour, we said, Pastor, you must be at our wedding. The wedding at uh, Archbishop Blessing Daouza's church in Benin. Said, we are going to pay for your return flight ticket. You, you are going with us. You, we will pay for your flight to and fro to Benin, and you, you will be at the wedding. So no problem. It will be a good time, a, a nice one to go and see how Benin Edo looks like. So we traveled. We went. We came back as we speak now. When they had their first son, we did a Zoom, a video call to do naming ceremony. They had the second daughter. So, so now they have two. Hello? Because God has a reservation. Maybe you have been hitting your head at a particular junction. Step back and relax and hear the word of the Lord this morning that God has a reservation for you. I can give you testimonies and testimonies of what God has done through His grace upon this ministry. But the bottom line is this you must understand and your eyes must be open. Truly, that this particular year, which is a leap year, the Lord will give me a quantum leap. Yeah. You don't know what a quantum leap is. Should I take it to quantum chemistry or quantum physics? The electron acquires kinetic energy and all of a sudden takes a leap more than usual. It's supposed to go from orbit A to orbit B, but now it's orbiting from A to like how? Or X. Look at how many lines, shells it has, it has this. And scientists say when the electron quantum leaps like that, it takes a while for it to settle and it did. Again, it keeps moving like that. Your life is about to quantum leap. 2024 is just not another year for you. It's a special year. It's not just a leap year by, by just, just for fun. It's a leap year that will bring a quantum leaping into your destiny. What you have not been able to achieve in the last 10 years. This year shall be 10 years in one year for you. The same year you will get married, the same year you will do your name ceremony, the same year you will travel abroad, the same year you will have international opportunities, and you begin to say, Lord, which one should I choose? Where, where was I five years ago? Look at how you have mesmerized me with miracles. For when the Lord turned again the captivity of Samuel, you are like, damn, that dream. There was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. They said that the hidden amongst themselves, the Lord has done great things for us. Oh, Abraham. Genesis 22 verse 13. Genesis 22 verse 13. A time came when God had to tell Abraham, I'm going to test you. Give me your son. Your beloved son, Isaac. Offer him on Mount Moriah. Bible scholar said Mount Moriah was meters, many kilometers away from their tent. So they had to enjoy it. So Abraham had the choice. After trekking for one kilometer and there was no better means of transport in those days, he had to trek. And Isaac looked at the father, I can see the servants, I can see the life, I can see all this thing. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And said, the Lord will provide. He never knew he would be the sacrificial lamb. Amen. And Abraham got to Mount Moriah that God has shown him, and he lifted up his knife, was about to slice open the throat of Isaac to make him a bond sacrifice. And the law. Look, look at verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes. He begins with verse 12. Back up to verse 12. So that I can read from context. Verse 12. Verse 12. 
And he said, that was God speaking, lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything of me, for now I know, past the test, that you fear God, seeing that thou hast not withholding your son, your only son. God didn't ask him to sacrifice Ishmael. It was Isaac, that precious favorite of the father. Is the one he waited for for many years, 25 years. And his father's house at 75 when he jetted out. 100 years was he. 25 years later was when he embraced his first son, Isaac. He tried to promise. And God said, Sacrifice him or something out there. God had the divine the salvation for Abraham. Even when Abraham thought, Ah, so Isaac, this will be your end. What would I tell Sarah? Have you not thought of it that when, when they were going, he never told Sarah, if you were, if you were Sarah, would you allow that old man to ah, go to King Where would I start from? No. Go, go and take your girlfriend's, your girlfriend's son. And is that one is older now? Go and take that one now. This one, my precious Isaac, you don't take. When he down all the consequences, was about to slash his throat. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold him, behind him, behind him, which means he even walked past that round. So it there are destiny apart you have been passing by on Shasha Road, on Nakomodo Road, on Maryland, on Ikeda, where you walk, but you have not seen them. Today, from today, your eyes are open like eager to see them. The Bible said he saw behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his aunt. Those of you that know about ram, and if you know that ram. For a ram to be caught in, in, in branches of a tree is strange. That must have been a, a serious catching. Because rams are stubborn. You know what I'm talking about? Rams, they want to free themselves and come and eat at the person or eat at their fellow animals. But the Bible said this one was divinely arrested. There are blessings, there are opportunities that have been divinely arrested, orchestrated for you this year. It is my prayer again. Your eyes are open to discover them. The ram that was caught in the ticket by his hand, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for him. But this will have been the fate of Isaac, my beloved. Ah, but Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I prophesy, the Lord will call for eyes to see your divine The Lord will cause your eyes to see your divine reservation. That which the Lord has reserved for you, you will see them this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. What are the keys as I close? Keys as I close. Just five minutes. Keys to unlocking your reservations. You need to unlock them. Number one, the force of recognition. Genesis 21 verse 19. Recognition works with sight. How do you say, I recognize that man? I saw him five years ago. We went to the same school. We did a master's degree at Harvard. I saw you at Lagos Business School two years ago. How do you recognize him? Sight. 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 And the Bible said, and God opened her sight and she saw. I prophesy, divine eyes serves are coming upon your eyes. It's not just talking about his physical eyes, his inner eyes, your spiritual eyes. Your spiritual eyes have been flooded with light. Flooded with light. All of a sudden, everything becomes plain to you. That which you have looked away, that, 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 that which you have overlooked that you did not recognize, the Lord will flood your eyes with light. And you begin to recognize. You will recognize friends for who they really are. You will recognize pretenders in your circle for who they really are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus recognized Judas. Even when other disciples were asking, who is it? Who is it? Jesus told John the Beloved, the person that will put his hand in the pot now is the person. Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, recognized his saboteur. May God give you grace to recognize them in business. Yeah. You won't go and put your life and hard end money, life savings into the hands of saboteurs that will sabotage you the next 25 years of your life again. You are just recovering only to put money in January again. Only to repeat the sorrow of 2023. I prophesy, may the force of recognition work in your favor. Yeah. Your sight is flooded with divine light. Yeah. You will see enemy for who they are. You will see your friends for who they are. In the name of Jesus. 
Here is where we need the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. Okay. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is what we need here to open us up into the realm of recognition of things beyond beyond the realm of sight. Paul said, as for no we know man after the flesh. They may come after the flesh and they are looking so oh so tantalizing, so wonderful. But the Lord will say, No, <laughs> I have rejected him. Don't make him your partner. Don't take any father from him as your investor. He's not your investor. EFCC is looking for this on their radar. And thus, by that force of recognition, you free yourself from any battle with EFCC and police. May your eyes be open. May you hear instructions. But as it is written, talk about the Holy Ghost here. I am not saying there are things that are beyond plain sight. I cannot say them. No, hear her. Neither has he entered the realm of imagination of man. The thing which God has prepared for them that love him. Look at how do we now decipher them? How do we how do we see them? Verse 10 now. Help me. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. May the Holy Ghost reveal things to you. Yeah. Whether in the dream of the night or in the dream of the day or in the vision of the day or vision of the night, the Holy Ghost will reveal things to you. Yeah. Ah, Isaiah 30. When you turn to the left or to the right, your ear shall hear a voice behind you. Yeah. Say what? This is the way. You will not walk in error. Yeah. Proverbs 16 verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. Ha! But the Bible says the end thereof are death and destruction. You will not walk the path of death anymore. You will not walk the path of sabotage anymore. The Lord will deliver you from foreign The Lord will deliver you from conspirators. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You will not walk the way of death, the way of destruction. In the name of Jesus. Say, I need the Holy Ghost. Lift up your say, I need the Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Spirit of the living God, come upon me afresh. I embrace your ministry. Open me up to new realms of supernatural signs and recognition. From this day, shout, Amen! Amen. Number two, force to unlock, to unlock your reservation, apart from the force of recognition, is the force of Romans 8.28. I call this one Romans 8.28. The force of Romans 8.28. You can call it code 828. Romans 8.28. What does Romans 8.28 say? The Bible says here, yeah, for we know that all things work for good to them that love God and to them who are the God according to his purpose. Can you put your name here? Say, I know that all things work together for good to me, Olaike Kundayo, that loves God, and to me, who is called according to his purpose. Say, all things, the good, the bad, the ugly. If you ask Joseph, Joseph, how come you wasted so much time in the prison? He will tell you, in hindsight now, it's never a waste. If I'm not gone to the prison, I would not have met the chief butler and the chief baker. If I didn't meet the chief baker and the chief butler, my life would have been away because I would not have had the privilege of interpreting their dreams and I would not have told the chief baker three days time you'll be beheaded, chief, chief butler, three days time you'll be reinstated back to your former position. And if I did not do that, two years after, look at the arithmetic of God, two years after, the chief butler will not stand for me in the corridors of power before the Pharaoh of Egypt to recommend me. There's something called the force of recommendation. Where you are sleeping, somebody is speaking, busy fighting for you in the asshole. Room. Are you getting me? Say the good, the bad, the ugly, all of them this year. <laughs> we work together for my good. Oh, Pastor, how come I suffered? I suffered miscarriages. God is preparing you for better things. God is preparing. How come I suffered today as a young lady? Maybe if you had gotten married so early, paraventure you will have married the wrong person. Only for you to regret later in life. God has kept you this far. Not to come this far alone, but to, to cause you to enter into greater glory. Everything that a child of God goes through is for a reason. And this is the reason. We know that all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the unpleasant, 
How come that contract did not fly through last year? How come I almost testified but I didn't testify? God was, God was working something better. How now? How come I've been going to Sino for many years? God was preparing my womb for Samuel. One Samuel is better than a thousand other children. Why? How come I've had to wait for a child for the next five years of my life? Because God has a better plan for me. A reservation. And how to unlock it is true. Code 8 28. Let me show you Father Abraham. When Abraham was going to kill Isaac, look at this consideration. Look at this contemplation. The writer of the book of Hebrews, Paul the Apostle, gave us his contemplations in Hebrews 11. Help me. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. As I begin to close. Hebrews 11. All things work together. 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham. Look at the story of Genesis 22 now being chronicled in another pattern in Hebrews. Look at how the Bible is being submerged into one another. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that, he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, a type of Christ. Help me. Verse 18. Of whom it was said, look at the promise that has gone ahead. In Isaac, not in Ishmael, shall thy seed be called. And God is asking him to offer the same Isaac. Is it not contradictory, Lord? But I know what I'm doing. Even when you cannot hear him, even when you cannot trace him, still trust him. Even when God, what God said to you last year seemed to be contradictory to what you are hearing today, still follow him. He can never mismanage your life. If you make the whole universe, the whole universe, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and all those planets in just six days, your life is too small for him to mismanage. Trust him. Can you trust him that whether I know what you are doing or I don't know the name of what you are doing with my life, I will still trust you. The Bible says, accounting, recognizing that God was able to raise Isaac up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in the figure. Do you understand this place? Abraham was contemplating in his heart. Even if I kill this boy, I know. By the time, whether, whether, whether by the time I born him alive and it's, it's a burnt offering, somehow, somehow, I will get home and we meet Isaac waiting at home. No wonder they call him the father of faith. His faith was so much that this God said cannot disappoint me. He can't fall my hands. If I had to wait for 25 years for a child, and you are demanding for the same child, you have a better option. Ah! You have a better option for me. And I prophesy that in the name of Jesus, even when you cannot feel him, when you cannot trust him, the grace to trust him is coming upon you in this time. In the name of Jesus. Abraham had to observe code 828. All things work together. For my good, I am the called of God according to his purpose. As I close this morning, what have you been through in the last five days? What have you been through in the last week? What have you been through in the last one year? What have you been through in the last one month? Do you believe that what is well through? Do you believe that God has the best in store for you? Do you believe that God can never, He can never bring you this far only to abandon you here? Higher. He's the Alpha and the Omega. What happens in the middle does not matter. What happened? We have seen the end of that movie. You know, when you are watching a James Bond 007, 007 movie, and uh, somebody, you have watched it before, and somebody has not watched it. The person is agitated, is on the edge. It's like, ah, oh, they will kill you. Say, no, James Bond never died. I watched him two days ago. He will still come out. They have shot him. He fell down. Did he die? No, he came up. He came up again. You will not die there. Yeah. Their, their expectation for your life this year will not come to pass. Yeah. They have told you you are the only Christian in this family, you are coming back to beg us. But the Lord will shock them. Yeah. Instead of you begging them, the Lord will turn the tables around. Yeah. And they shall be the one like the brothers of Joseph making obeisance to you. Do you believe all will be well? I'm asking you, do you believe all will be well? Do you believe that this world can never go on fulfilling your life? Then can you say Romans 8, 28 loud and clear with me now? Say, for I know. You don't know. Do you know? Now loud and clear. Let's go. 
For I know that all things work together for my good to me that love God and to me who is the call according to his purpose. Say it with confidence now. Once you go, for I know. I may not have the food to eat after the service. I still know. I may be holding my landlord. I still know. I may not have paid my children's school fees. I still know. I may have bills. I'll start. Ha! They may have given me two days ultimatum to settle these bills. Ha! But I know that I know. How do you know, Mama? I just know. Daddy, how do you know? I just know that I know beyond every shadow of doubt that this God we come through for me. If he came through for Hagar, and he came through for Hebron, pray on the keys for me. If he came through for the saints of old, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, how do you know that this God you are bragging on will not disappoint you in the fire? How do you know that when you enter the fire, that the fourth man in the furnace will be waiting for you? I just know. Jabez, how do you know that God will answer these prayers? I just how do you know that you will not end childless? I just know, I just know, I just know, I just know. Can you rise to your feet and begin to prophesy? I know, I just know. I know beyond every shadow of doubt. I will not end my journey halfway. I will not end my journey in shame. I know that the best is reserved for me.
Between you and God now, I'll give you one minute, 60 seconds, to settle with God. What is that thing you are believing God for this year? What is that thing you know that God, will, God must intervene in the next two days? In the next three days, in the next three months, in the next 21 days? What is that thing? Go ahead and talk to God. Go ahead and talk to God. Oh!